Twilio Studio is a very useful no-code product that allows us to easily create SMS or voice workflows in Twilio. However, one feature that is missing in the product is a database, and this prevents us from saving the data we collected during the workflow. One good solution for this is using Airtable as our database uh, because Airtable is very user-friendly and also it has a very straightforward API connection. In this video, we are going to write a Twilio Studio workflow that collects email addresses via SMS. So when we send a text message to a Twilio number, the workflow will check if our text message is a valid email address and if it is valid, it saves it to Airtable. For uh, performing the integration between Twilio and Airtable, we will write a Twilio function that uses the Airtable API. We are going to start by creating the Airtable base. So we have this empty account in Airtable in here and we're gonna start with a grid. Airtable has these uh, defaults where it already populates a bunch of columns and we'll have to remove some of them. They are called fields in Airtable. Okay, so we only need two and uh, we'll, we're gonna have a column um, called phone number and the type of the column will be a phone number. Um, yeah, Airtable already has uh, different useful types for columns. And uh, the second one will be called email. And also the type of this column will be customized field type. And uh, it should have an yeah email type. This is good. And also we need to we are going to remove the existing rows that are empty. So now we have an empty table inside um, Airtable and we are going to rename our base just to call, let's call it uh, Twilio Records. Next, we are going to add a function in Twilio that can write records to Airtable using the API. So we're going to look, take a look at the Airtable API. Just search for Airtable API. And there will be this um, link in here with Airtable.com slash API. And they have this interactive demo where we first select the, our base that we just created, Twilio Records. We click on it. And here they list their uh, clients that are available for Airtable. Twilio functions only support Node.js at the moment, which is perfect because we can use the official Node.js client. I opened it in a different tab. And if we look um, down in the table section, it shows us how to create records, which is the method that we need to use. Uh, it cannot show us an example because we don't have any records in our table at the moment. So we're just gonna go back to Airtable and add one record to see that demo code. And uh, I just added an empty record. And uh, now if we refresh this page, we will see a sample code using the REST API or the um, this is the uh, Node.js library that we are going to use. Now we need to transfer this code from here to a Twilio function. So. It, uh, if we go to a Twilio account, I have this Twilio trial account that doesn't have anything in it, any phone numbers, functions, anything. So we'll go to functions. If you don't see it in here, you can uh, go to explore product and find functions and pin it. Or I think you can also use the search bar to search for the functions product. So once you have it, we go to functions classic and uh, first we go to configure. And in here, uh, we have a list of packages that all the functions will use and we need to add the Airtable package in here. So if we go to the GitHub page, it will say in here, npm install Airtable. So the name of the package is Airtable in here, just like that. And uh, also we're gonna add environment variables for our API key and then the base key and the table uh, ID, the base ID and the table ID. So in here, we're gonna add Airtable API key. And we will get this one from, uh, if, we go, if we go to Airtable, 
and uh, we click on uh, account in here and uh, there will be a section API which will have the API key hidden if you don't have an API key you need to generate one and then we're going to transfer this API key into the environment variables in Twilio just like that and now we're going to add uh, two more environment variables so one will be for the base ID Airtable base ID so a base inside Airtable is this thing Twilio records that can contain multiple tables and um, we, we can get this one either from the API page it will be listed at the top or uh, also if we click and we open our table and if we look in the URL there will be a section that starts a section of the URL that starts with app so app and we we copy this one we go to Twilio and we copy this ID from there and also the table ID so air table table ID and again it will be a section of the URL that starts with the table T TBL so we go in here and uh, we we add the variable and then we need to click save next we'll uh, create the function that actually has the code so we'll go to list inside functions and here uh, create function we'll start from blank click on create and um, we're going to call this one right to Airtable and for uh, the path the same thing right to Airtable and in here so uh, the function signature is already pre-populated uh, what it has so the context will contain the environment variables that we just created the event is uh, data specific to the actual call of the function so we'll have there the phone number and the email that's coming from the text message and callback is uh, what we need to call when our function finished execution so if we if we do if we call with callback and the first argument is null it means that the function executed successfully and if this if the first argument is not null then it means that our function failed this is specific to Twilio functions so from here from the API tab we were looking at previous we need to copy this air tape we need to import the library first so we go to function this thing we can uh, do outside of the um, function definition and in here uh, the rest can be inside of the um, function so in here um, so in here the API key is stored in an environment variable we added we added it earlier so it will be context context uh, and then Airtable API key the base we have it as um, Airtable base key also in the context base ID and also the table ID we have it in another environment variable and it will be context Airtable table ID so in here the create function will take a list of records but we're, all, we're only going to write uh, one record so in here it will be phone number this is the name of the column in our Airtable um, Airtable table we so it has to match this thing over here phone number and the other one email so if we go back to functions so phone number in here and also we are we need to add uh, the email and these two fields will be received from the event object and we are going to link the studio workflow to to make sure it calls this function correctly with these two fields in event so event that phone number and in here event that email so here uh, this we don't need this was pre-populated by Twilio 
So just uh, reorganize this a little bit. So in here, the this uh, Airtable API takes this callback function that will be called once the once the API call finished execution. And if the API call uh, encountered any errors, this will be set. So this sample code will log the error to the console. But what we actually can do in here, we need to call the callback from Twilio with this error object. So just like this. And if it's, um, if it's successful, that error object will, uh, will not be defined. And we can, um, call, we can call the callback with null which means successful execution. And here we can return the object. We won't use it, but here, just so you know, you can return an actual value that can be reused then in the studio. So this part we don't need. Let's make sure it closes, everything closes correctly. Yeah, and this uh, pretty much should be it. And now if we hit save, our function is uh, deploying. It will take a few seconds just to make sure the function is deployed. Next, we'll write the studio flow that ties everything together. So we'll go here to studio. Again, if you don't have it, you can go to explore products and pin this product in here or search it in a bar, either way. So we go to studio and um, in here, we need to create a flow. Um, let's call it Airtable flow. Okay, start from scratch. It's good. And uh, yeah, and here, so we add all these widgets. First, uh, we can have different triggers for messages, calls, etc. We're going to make an SMS with messages uh, flow. So in here, first, we're going to add a condition. It's called split based on a rule. And here we're gonna check that the text message we received is actually a, an email address. So let's call check is email this box. So the variable we need to test is the flow, I think it's mess message body or something. Let's see. We need to link this, I think, and uh, now yeah, trigger message that body. Yeah, that that is the variable that we're checking, and we'll have two transitions in here. We're gonna add a new condition. So we're uh, the condition will be if uh, it matches a regular expression. And I have um, I have a regular expression saved from before. I will make it available. Um, I will put a link in the video description with this regular expression and the final code, you can find it there. So if it matches this regular expression in here. And um, let's see, that looks good. So let's, let's say if it matches, then uh, we, need, we need to call the function. If it doesn't match, we will return a message so in here, we're gonna send a message if no condition matches. So let's call this one is not email. And the message body will be, again, trigger body. We're gonna put it between quotes. Is not a valid email address. Please try again. Okay, and um, if it, it is a valid email address, then we save it to Airtable. So in here, in Tools and Execute Code, we need to select Run Function, and we're gonna drag it in here. So from this transition, uh, okay, if the value matches, then we, let's call this widget Write to Airtable like that. And the function URL is this one, right to Airtable and function parameters. 
uh, here in function parameters, um, yeah, if we if you remember in inside the event of the function, the event object in the function code, we had two, we used two fields, phone number. So the value for the phone number will take it from trigger. I think trigger message from this is the phone number of the person who call who messaged this uh, Twilio phone number and uh, we'll add another parameter function parameter it will be email and this one will be the trigger trigger that um, message body so let's see, let's make sure phone number is from, yes, correct, and uh, email is the body. So in here, um, if, if this matches, we, we will redirect to this uh, widget in here, right to Airtable. And um, also we're going to send the confirmation that it succeeded or it failed. So now we're going to add a send message widget and uh, match it, link it from success. So here, let's say success message. Success. And also we're gonna add a second one for failure. We'll call it failure message. Link it from here. And also we're going to send failure. Of course, you can make make these messages more uh, user friendly if you're running this in production. So yeah, this should uh, this should be it. If we exit this box and we hit publish, and um, yeah, now we can connect this flow to a Twilio number. So if we go to the console and we go to phone numbers in here. Go to manage active numbers. I don't have any number at the moment, so I can buy a new number. It doesn't really matter. They are all one dollar, so I'll buy this one. Okay. And next we go to configure. And uh, in messaging down here, when a message comes in, we will use a studio flow and we have this Airtable flow so we hit save and uh, now now we can test it so I copy this phone number in here and I'll go to my Google Fi messages which is connected to my actual phone number so here uh, if we start a new message and we type in this Twilio number now let's send something that is not an email address just like hello see what happens so uh, yeah it says hello is not a valid email address please try again which is what we expected this uh, prefix is because my twilio account is trial if you pay for twilio this will go away okay now we can try a valid email address let's say a at b.com And um, it, it says success. So this means that if we go to Airtable, we should see the phone number. Yeah, and it's already here. The phone number from which I sent the text message and the email address we just entered. And this means it worked as expected. That's it for today. The source code will be linked in the video description below. If you want to support the channel, consider subscribing. It makes a big difference as it encourages me to make more videos. Thanks for watching.